sad, 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 sad. <laughs> <laughs> the on the track. Welcome to Come On Son, the podcast. My name is Ed Lover. Every now and then, I sit down and talk to somebody that I find extremely interesting. It's not a lot. If y'all listen to the last couple of podcasts that I've done, I've had no guests because, quite frankly, I haven't found anybody that interesting. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> only talk to people that I think is extremely interesting. And we in the 50th year of hip-hop, so it's only right that I talk to one of the greatest producers in hip-hop history. Maybe him, like myself, don't get invited to the big Grammy 50th joint. They just overlook our contributions. But still, nonetheless, this man was one of the hitmen. This man is the man that gave us the Benjamins. And his story starts a long time before that, Mr. Derek D. J- Dot Angeletti, my man in the building right now. What up, brother? What's up, big brother? Bro, let me ask you a question. Yes, Straight sir. off the bat. When Straight did, off the when bat. When did we meet? When did we meet? When did we meet? You think know the answer? It. I think I think I do. I, 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 I first saw you when I was a, ch- a teenager. Right. Yes. And, and I lived in Brooklyn, but my cousins lived in Queens. And your cousins were? Um, it all depends which ones you're talking about. Penny? Right. Dawn and Danita Davis. Those were my cousin's friends. Right. Penny yes. was your cousin. Yes. So, so I met you with Dawn and Danita Davis when I was dating Danita. And what year was that? That was, shoot, that was 80, probably 87, 86, something like that. I because was in high Penny school. and Dawn and Danita used to be together all the time. First of all, those three women were probably the finest women in, in, the, in the world. Right? <laughs> and for us at that time, Penny, Dawn, and Danita. Dawn and ooh, Danita ooh. were my cousin's friends. I'm yeah, they were Penny's friends. Yeah and, and, yeah, and my family, I had family in Queens. The Colossos lived in Queens, and I was from Brooklyn, yeah. So then I saw you again when I got into Two Kings in the Cypher. Right, and the funny thing about it is when I saw you again when you were doing Two Kings in the Cypher, I was really kind of afraid to talk to you. Why? Because I never thought you liked me. I was like, <laughs> I was like yo, this dude don't like me. I was like, he, he, he was rolling with Penny. Yeah. And I was like with Danita, way before Danita did the rain with Orange Juice Jones. Mm. And her father had a spot in Queens on Linden called Mr. Uglies. He what had was a bar. What, what was Mr. Uglies? It was, it was, it was a, a bar. bar. He had a, a bar. bar. It was on 197th Street and Linden Boulevard. And man, we was all scared of her pops. I said, when you pull up in the driveway, if I was there, I'd, I'd bounce. So man. who was your crew in Queens? My crew was Kurt Flirt, of course. Kurt, Kurt, yeah. Uh, all of us around, we all lived not too far from Hollis Avenue. Jam Master J. All so of you knew the Disco Twins, too? Yeah, all okay, of them. Yeah, 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 yeah those, all those of them. OGs, we yeah. were in a, uh, in a group called Master Sounds. Master Sounds. Yeah, okay. the DJ group. So wow. When I first saw when I saw you in Two Kings in the Cypher, I was like, wait a minute, that looked like... I was little, like, that is D. Penny Cousin. Dirty, I was yeah. like, dude, don't like me. I was, like, <laughs> was that your real intro into hip hop? Was Two Kings and a Cypher? Mm-mm, no, mm-mm. what was you doing before that? I was in a high school group called Ebony and Ivory, me and my boy Kenny Hodge. And we got our demo used by the Foursome Seeds and the Fat Boys. It was called Lost. And that killed me. Killed what do you me, mean used? Me. Meaning we heard pieces of our demo that we had gave them in this new song. That you they directly did. gave it to the Forza DJ? Our DJ gave it to, no, we gave it to uh, Buff, God bless the dead. Okay, Buff was from, from the Fat Boys. From the Fat Boys. Right, right. And then May, a few weeks later, or months later, we heard uh, Mr. Magic, Super, Super, Blast, Blast, Blast. Right. And it was a record with the Forza Seeds of the Fat Boys. Or, oh, or something that, they did. Uh, oh my um, God, and, I know and, the record. I think it was Gilligan's Island. The Gilligan's Island Something, scene, something they yeah. did. That was me and Kenny Hodge and my partner, Filthy Rich. We had did little pieces that's that. funny, bro, and because I, when I was MC Eddie D Eddie with Master D. Sounds, I remember flipping Gilligan's Island myself. A few people and did. And I was like, they might have, they must a have few. been to a park or yeah, something yeah, when I did that few, joint. A few people did it, so yeah. that deterred me. And then, um, then Bismarck came to my high school in 86. Wow. And that kind of put a little battery in my back again, because who was this guy? But he was entertaining as fuck. He came to Tilden High School. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. In Brooklyn. <laughs> so that now, was If you it. ever see the documentary on Biz, which I is a really it. good I one. I saw it. Biz, Biz was all over the place, Biz bro. Biz was all over the place. Biz, I, Biz used to beatbox, and I would rhyme in a roller skating ring in Elmont, Long Island, called Wall Cliff Roller Skate Ring, and Get then it became Roller Castle later on. Wow. That's how I met Biz, all the way back in like 82, 83. Wow. So Biz was all over the place. Yeah. The Dougie Fresh. I met and- him in 86 in my high school, on stage performing Biz Monk. That's how I met him. Wow. That's and I crazy. put the battery, like, said, it I just can said, do this? Well, it just, he was having fun. 
he was just enjoying himself. And I was like, that's what it should be. Right. You know what I'm saying? And around my way, I grew up around Wingate High School, so UTFO and them was already at Wingate High School, and they was popping. So I, I went to Tilden, which was further away, but I was like, okay, they over there. I'm doing my little rap, and Bismarck comes. Maybe I can, I can, maybe I could try it. But then when that demo thing happened, I just gave it up and then went to Howard University. He said, "Fuck, it, I'm gonna go to college." So when did Two Kings and the Cipher start? Did that start? At Howard University. I started at Howard, Howard. Howard University. Okay, so you met I'm in Ra Lawrence at Howard at University Howard. at Howard. Okay, he, he in your at, freshman year. In my freshman year, Ron was a, three years older than me, so Ron already had a record out called "Let the Drummer Get Ill" with Herbie Love bugging them. Wow. When he, when he got to Howard. So he was already half a star when he got there. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? He was yeah. already half a star. And it wasn't until maybe two years later that he approached me and said, we should make a record together. You, you nice. And I, I, you know, he got, he wanted to do this. You know, Ron. Okay, so Ron was just one of the program jumps. No, he wanted to rhyme too, but he wanted to do the beats as well. And he said, me and you can do it. So he approached me and said, let's do this group thing. Right. And that's how Two Kings How did y'all come with Two Kings and the Cypher? We both used to be in the 5% Nation. Okay. So, um... And then at Howard, Howard University, we're getting all this knowledge. And Ron was way into the Egyptology. And I was just happy to be at a place where I was learning more than I was learning in Tilden. Like, we learned about the presidents and bullshit. I'm, now I'm learning about Mandela. I'm learning about uh, uh, Che Guevara. I'm learning about real life revolutionaries and things that should change our lives. And I felt, so we said, we're kings and, and we both were kind of building with each other, so that's how we said we're gonna be two kings in a cypher, and that was that. And who signed y'all? Um, well, first, Hak Islam from Queens. Okay. Hak, we used to be called him True Mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> he managed us, and then he got us a deal with Gregory Peck at Bahia RCA in 1990. Wow. And we dropped our first record four months later called Moving On Him. Okay. In 1990. 1990 was, was our first record we dropped. Did I play your video on your MTV Raps? Did nah, y'all have a video? We didn't have no video. They I mean, never did. gave you no, a video? No, we had a video, but it wasn't on them. It wasn't. No? We didn't graduate to that yet. It was BET only. <laughs> <laughs> we was wow. BET, we was BET Because 1990, we was popping in 90. No, y'all was popping, but yeah. we, we wasn't. Our record oh, wasn't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, because we played a lot of stuff that came through. It was probably a promotions department that was sent to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we would have definitely played it. Because yeah, we played... Yeah. Everything, and especially if I'd have saw you, I'd have been like, yeah, we, <laughs> that's right. the need in them cousins. We play in that joint right there. <laughs> Definitely. So y'all, yes. would y'all drop the single? Did y'all, y'all drop an album? Yeah, we dropped the album the next year, 1991, called From Pyramids to Projects. And yes, I, was, I remember that. And that was a double entendre. From Pyramids, because that's where we come from, and our mindset was thinking pyramids. Projects was the same thing. We, they, now we're in projects, but we're also projects from them crackers. They were experimenting on us and doing things, so we came in saying... We went from pyramids to projects, so that's why Ron represented the feds, and I yeah. represented the now with the hats. And yeah, the yeah, hat. he was the pyramid. You was definitely the project. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that I was coming. You was yeah. definitely. I was the project side. You was definitely the, the projects. When yeah. did that? When did you guys decide not to do? What was the catalyst that made y'all say, "Okay, enough for two kings in the cipher"? We got our pink slip. Really? Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we critical acclaim. You know what that means. Not selling no records. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. Right, right. right. So a critical claim don't get you a second album. Right. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't do it. And that was it. And y'all didn't shop in anywhere else? Nah, nah, nah. Ron moved to L.A. I went back home to Mom's basement in St. Albans. Yeah. That was it. Started working at a bookstore uh -huh. and all that. And then fate. But fate. you had, you already met... Uh, Diddy at Howard. At Howard, yeah. And Mark Pitts, I've seen a lot everybody. of pictures of you and him back yeah, then. Yeah, me and Puff started throwing parties in 1988. Black man in a Puerto Rican production. <laughs> and that's how we met, because he came to campus, you know, he doing the dance, and he got the colors in his head. The, right. The, the, you know, you remember how they used to have the holes, and you tie up all that yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah. And I got the Brooklyn crew, the Philly crew, we on the side, and he got all the little young chicks. And I'm DJing already, and I got the AKAs and the DC crew. So he, one day Puff approached me and said, yo, we need to do a party. Fuck it, let's do it. Next thing I know, we the biggest things in sliced bread, we throwing parties and all that. And the same year we got our record deal, Puff got his internship. Wow, at, 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 Uptown, at, at Uptown. Uptown. So okay. he was at Howard, you know, that's the story. He was driving back and forth. Right. We throwing parties on Thursday nights. He's driving up in his car. Then he comes back and we hit the streets promoting. And he was doing that for months till Andre gave him the permanent position. And, and then now we on tour, Puff is in New York. And the same year again, 1993, he gets his pink slip. We get our pink slip. Wow, the same year. Same year. Uh, why that did was Andre fake. fire him? 
honestly don't know. I, I think Puff, that's like a mystery that I, I don't think there's ever been I think been the told. story was Puff was just feeling himself, and Andre was like, it could only be one king in the castle. Really? I think that's what I heard. Well, is this, well, Puff had already had Mary out, and was he working on Jodeci and stuff like that? Yeah, Jodeci. So Puff had already did like Jodeci and Mary. Was Uptown had fire, but it was yeah, like, he was he fire. did those two albums. Right. Right, and then he bounced the 93 Starters label, and then was still around to do Mary's my life, because remember, I was managing Mary J. Blige. Remember, then right. me and you reconnected again. So that's what happened. So yeah, so he, even though he left, Andre said, still do this My Life album for me. Okay, all yeah. right. Yeah. All right, so when did you get back with Puff after Two Kings and Cypher, after going back to your to mom's Queens. basement in St. Albans and then working at the bookstore? Half Pierre was living with Puff in Scarsdale. Nasheen Myrick, Mark Pitts, and all of them, they was doing that. This is right when Bad Boy? Started, 93. Okay, okay. My mom was like... Because before that, he was in a little apartment in Hackensack. Cause okay. He, he lived around the corner from me. I lived on Prospect Avenue. Oh, I didn't that's know that. That's when Puff had the Burgundy Cabriolet. Okay, yes. That's yeah, the same way. Right, right, yeah. Right, right. So they was up there, and Harvey used to say, yo, come up there. And I was like, nah, I come up there and visit, but I can't sleep up there and live with y'all because my mom was like, you got to put some money on the table every Friday. Right. Like, you know, we don't live for free. So I would meet them after work all the time and just go up to the studio and... I just made myself around, and I told a story. Um, I made Puff some money off some free T-shirts he was make, he was making to give away, and I saw them giving away, and I saw the pandemonium, and I said, "Yo, what the fuck, man!" So I went the next day and went to Harlem. Bad boy T-shirt. Bad boy T-shirt. When they okay. first came, they was giving them away. Right. And I'm sitting up there like, "Yo," but they fighting over them. They, you know, they people want them and they screaming and hollering. So next day I went to Harlem and them said, "Yo, could I make some?" And they said, "Yeah." So I went to Deferred. ASAP Fur Father. ASAP Fur Father. Yeah, big D, up. Rest D, in D, peace D, to, D Ferg, right. to Fur. Right. Big Fur from Harlem. Yeah, from Harlem. Everybody yeah. from our generation <laughs> know Fur. Right. Love Fur. Love Fur. Knew how Fur got down. Mm -hmm. Never pro Fur was probably one of the nicest. Fur reminds me of Black Just from Queens. Oh, yeah, yeah. Black right? Just, Same yes. kind of temperament. No, if you don't nicest, like them, you nicest got a problem. gangsters you ever met right. in my life. Right. I'm going to put yeah. it out there. <laughs> and that's ASAP Ferg's fault. Yes. Absolutely. So he made me a few hundred t-shirts, and all the interns for Bad Boy wasn't working. So I said, listen, I'm working a regular job. I can't sell t-shirts. Y'all go ahead and scramble these t-shirts. I'll give you $10 a piece off them. Y'all ain't making nothing. Right. Couple, I've made three, 400 t-shirts maybe. They came back with empty bags. Right. So if it's seven interns and they sold all them shirts for ten dollars, six, seven hundred dollars now these dudes got in their pocket. They like this, they cheesing. Walked in the club, gave Puff cash money. What's this? Said T shirts. Open ball, me. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, he was like, make him some more T shirts. And so that's how I got it. I made myself a card that said director of merchandising. And that's how I inserted myself in the bad boy. He never officially he never gave hired me. you as director of... I never officially worked for Puff until I became the A&R years later. Even when you were producing? Even when I was producing. I but we all him. thought that the hitmen were all under the bad boy umbrella. He managed us, but we didn't work for him. I could do whatever I wanted to do. I oh, do we, didn't, we didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He, didn't. he only managed us. And the team was a concept. It wasn't, y'all can only work for me and me only. Nah, it wasn't that at all. It was, he wanted us to give him the majority of the records and y'all give the rest to them if you <laughs> need to. <laughs> if you want to. But nah, he didn't, I never worked for Puff until uh, uh, I actually became an A&R. When he hired me to do the road management for Mary, for Mary, he gave me a salary and a slight percentage of his. Okay. So I didn't consider that working for him because I'm getting a piece of the management side too. Right, it wasn't absolutely. just a salary. So. When, were, when were you? Uh... 94 to 96. After we okay. got dropped and I'm living in my mother's basement. Right. He approached me and said, what you think? After I made him the money for the t-shirts. Right. He saw I was hustling and that was going on for six, seven months. Now I'm in. I'm also booking shows for Craig and Biggie because I'm, I mean, you're Craig and Big because now I'm in the office. Now I quit my job. Right. Because that t-shirt shit is making me money. More than he was making probably at your job. Absolutely. And it's cash money. Right. I'm making cash. I ain't got to report it. Right. Right. So I, now I'm up at the office and I'm sitting at Kelly Green desk. I got me a little card. So I asked the management while I'm sitting around doing nothing. It don't take a lot to make t-shirts. What else could I do, Mark? Could I book some shows? I was on the road just a few years ago with Two Kings. Right. Called DC Promoters, Atlanta. Uh, North Carolina, next thing I know, I got Big and Craig on the road doing shows. So oh, now wow. I'm selling t-shirts and booking shows for Craig from this little corner office in Harv's office. And so Puff approached me one day, he said, I'm watching you, yo. You doing your thing. 
Want to manage Mary with me? Like that simple. I said, oh shit, give me a day. Because I smoke with her now, I drink. I know right. I'm in now. Now you want me right. to be a boss. It's going to be hard. Yeah. So how, how hard was that transformation from hanging with Mary, smoking with Mary, drinking with Mary to now I got to tell you where to be, what time to be there? It was you know, just, did it blur the lines of the friendship? A little bit, but I went to her first and asked her what she thought. Right. And her sister. Right. What y'all think? Y'all know me. What y'all think? Let's do it, Dot. You, you seem like a cool guy. You've right. been around. You don't, you know, I'm, I think when you meet me, you could tell I'm, I'm part of the crew, but I don't, I'm not of the crew, mm-hmm. if you know what I'm saying. I don't sniff cocaine. I don't do the drugs. I smoke weed. That's it. Right. I, and I was a drinker, but I was this much of a drinker. I didn't hang out with them everywhere. I didn't, like, I wasn't always in the back of Puff's car. Y'all going to the club? I'll meet y'all there. Right. So before he gets there, so when he jumps out the car, I'm the first one there with him instead of trying to drive behind him. And then you can't park, and he's already in the club, and you spend 20 minutes looking for a space. Right. So they kind of knew that I was part of the crew, but I wasn't of the crew. Right. So now I think they like that. So, and it worked for two years. So from 94... To 96. Okay, because I was going to get on your ass because <laughs> 92, pause, 92, <laughs> we were shooting Who's the Man. Right. And Mary was supposed to sing Amazing Grace. And she fucked oh, up I wasn't an on, entire day. I wasn't around there. You know how much money it costs to set up and wait for somebody all fucking day? For a movie. And they just don't show up? Wow. That's what happened with her. Wow. And if you imagine her there. 92? Y'all want to marry? We were shooting in 92. The movie came out in 93. She was popping in 92? Yeah. 92. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 92. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That movie dropped in 1993. Juice and Who's the Man dropped both in the same year. Wow. So that was, yeah. That was crazy. That's that was crazy. a crazy year. So I'm about to blame you for that. Nah, don't blame me up. for that. But you, why, did it, why did it end? And when did you start producing? Those are both two questions. All right. Two questions. So... While we on the road, I'm on the road, Ron picked up from D.C. because we got dropped, and he moved to L.A. to work with Shy, who also went to Howard University, the group Shy. Yeah. And so he's working on his second album. He's sending me beats. I'm on the road. I still want to rhyme. I still got the itch. So I bought a drum machine. So while I'm on my day offs and coming home, I would just try to make beats because I wanted to write. It wasn't necessarily I wanted to make beats. Ron was making these beats, but when he moved to California, he started adapting to that, and he was working on R&B stuff. So he was sending me stuff, but it wasn't my rap, my rap bop. So I was like, I got to make shit from, from me because I want to get all in it, you know what I mean? Right. And then um, <clears throat> one day I was playing something for a few dudes, and they said, play it again. Word? Play it again. So I played it again. Play another one. Word? Play another one. Next thing I know, a week or two later, I'm getting a call from Jimmy and, and Jam Master J. Yo, we want to use that beat for sugar. Word? I'm on the road with Mary. What beat? Right. I did, what's up, star? I'd like to get to know who you are. Right. Let's have drinks at the bar. I was on the show soundtrack. Yes. So that was my first track sold. And I said, oh, shit, I, I can do this. Like, I did it. How much did they pay you for it? Probably like five grand, four grand. I didn't okay. get funny because it gave me 500. Right. <laughs> and like, at that point, I didn't care because it was... It was a chance for me to get back in. I just needed somebody to know that I had it. I just, boom. And then Kedar bought two beats from me. Kedar Masterberg, God bless him. Wow. For Rakim's uh, Let's Go Back or The Return of the Back, whatever that album was when he was on Universal. It never got used, but he gave us $9,000, me and Ron. Wow. So we split 4500 You know, you get that up front. Yeah. You know, 4500 So I said, if it's 225 in L.A., I took mine next thing. I know he's on a plane back to L.A., back to New York. <laughs> like, oh, you doing it like that? Let's like, get, the, the, let's get busy. And that was it for us. And that's how we started getting into the product. Like, that's when I started saying, I think I can do this. I'm going to put the rap thing on the back burner. I think I can do this. Plus, I know how to rap. I felt I was nice. So if I get in a room with other MCs, I'm gonna be able to give them some jewels. Because mm-hmm. I got taught by Kenny Gamble when we made Two Kings in the Cypher album. We was driving from DC to Philly to be up under Mr. Gamble and Mr. Huff. Wow. Yikes. That's that's a that's learning right there. Learning. Damn, so you guys are from the tree of Gamble and Huff. From the tree of Gamble and Huff. Mr. Gamble used to come in the studio. Okay, so listen. If you here you go, try that. <laughs> It works, ding, 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 ding. you know what I'm saying? Right. That type of shit. What? Praise Mr. You know, all, all respect due to Mr. Gamble and Mr. Huff. Mr. Huff say five words to you. Quiet. Yeah. But them five words, 
blow you off about your seat. Because it was real short, you see. Do this. So we got that juice. So right. ha Hak Islam got us up under Mr. Gamble, Mr. That's Hak. incredible. Yeah, bro. so 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 my rec my record making ability stepped up a little bit. And then I got to, you know, then seeing, then managing Mary, I'm going up to the Uptown offices, so I'm seeing Teddy, I'm seeing Heavy D, I'm seeing Albie Shaw, Andre Harrell, I'm going to some of them sessions. Uh -huh. So now I'm snatching those jewels, just ear hustling. What's happening? Oh, that's how you did that? Oh, that's how Teddy did that? Oh, that's how this goes? That's, okay. Take it back and just drive. Ron, this is what I just learned. Right. And then Ron is still rocking with Kid and Play, and Ron's doing his thing. Yo, die. This is what I just learned. So by the time we connected and he moved back, it was like, let's do this, family. Right. Let's do this. No holds barred. No holds barred. Did I answer the question? Yes, you okay, did. Okay, cool. <laughs> You're going crazy in deep. So yeah. <laughs> once Rob came back, what was the first song that y'all placed together? What's Up Star. Okay. I mean, I, I, I started What's Up Star uh -huh. because I, you know, but Ron is the, my Dr. Dre, like Ron. <laughs> so he took that and took it and made it this, put the real snares. My, my kicks are Right. Ron put the Gush, right. go, go, he puts that in it and the, you know, the doo -doo 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 -doo. and that's how we did that. And then we, after that, we, we was on a tear that we did. I rock the party that rocks the body. For light? For light. You rock wow. the party that rocks the body. Yeah, and we're not even, don't, 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 and we're not, right. And we're not hitmen yet. We still not hitmen okay. yet. Okay. But y'all, because that was uh, an interpolation of Diana Ross's upside yeah, yes. down. Y'all didn't have to clear an example, did Yeah, you? we did. Okay, you had to clear yeah, that with did. Motown? Yeah. But did we Motown played, but, but, have it? That's what we did. A lot of people, I'm glad you caught that. Even though it was a sample, see, guys thought we just looped something up, did t -t 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 sing on it, right. it's a hit, let's go. Nah, we boom, 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 and then, you know, playing on top of it right. so we can have some dynamics that are different from the original, right. even hypnotized. Hypnotized don't go that speed. You know the original. Yeah, yeah. The, and you can hear our is, shit. It's rise it's by Herb Alpert. But I always got the doop, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. And we put the hoo. So it's not easy as cats think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. Um, one of your fellow hitmen, God rest his soul, Chucky. Chucky Thompson. Chucky Thompson. The great in, Chucky Thompson. The amazing Chucky yeah, Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Lived down on my block in West Orange. I live wow. next to Chris Lighty. And then Chucky lived on the other side. Of I didn't Chris. remember Chucky living in Jersey. Wow, yeah, he lived right there in West okay. Orange, down wow. the block. We all lived on the same block for a while. Wow. And Chucky used to always tell me, he said, Ed, look at Bad Boy stuff and look at the liner notes. We play over yeah. oh, that yeah. stuff. We don't just sample Loop it. Loop up. And put and it, yeah. What's the use of having nine musicians around if you ain't? <laughs> right. <laughs> if you're just going to sample stuff. Right. That would make no it, sense. And let it fly. Yeah, and, and unfortunately for the other sects of hip hop that think that what we did wasn't an art, they're clearly mistaken. Absolutely. When did, you, when did the Hitmen start? 96. Um, so after- Big got signed in what? Big was signed in 92. 92? Yeah, 92. But uh, the Hitmen started because after the success of a couple of records in 95. Which records were those? Uh, I Rock A Party, uh, we had did, um, uh, Nashim had did, um, 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 every day, dun, 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 every day. Yeah, Mary. Rain. Right, Nashim yeah. did that. Stevie had a Jodeci record. Chucky had Stevie my life. J, Stevie, Stevie J, y'all. Stevie J. Stevie J had, uh, okay. boom. So Puff was hearing all this, and we around. So one day he said, I, I need to make hits for Biggie. I got him to finish his album. And he just invited the four of us, the Bad News Bears. I mean, there's Pete Rock, there's Primo, there's Large Professor, there's Havoc, there's Teddy, right. there's these dudes that are more qualified, Diamond D, DITC, right. uh, uh, the dudes from Brooklyn. They're so much more qualified than us. Yeah, Buck Wild and all of them. Buck Wild and all of them, but they, he said, Stevie, Naj, D. Dot, and Ron, come on over here, and we're going to make this Hitman thing. You, you feel that? Thing? He said, yeah. Crazy. I'm, We're going to take a, sh a short break, baby. This is Come On, Son, the podcast. Derek D. Dot Edge Lady. Come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, son, 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 son. Come on, son. We back with more. This is my podcast. Come on, son. Derek D. Dot Angeletti, a.k.a. the Mad Rapper, a.k.a. one of the hitmen, is in the building. When y'all form back, it started the Hitmen. Right. All four of y'all had already had hit records. No, we had 
There were no hits. We had a couple of records out. It wasn't hits. I wouldn't say they were hits. Yet. What do you call a hit? Because to me, I Rock the Body was a hit record, bro. Okay. Did it well? Did it chart well? It, it did well, yes. But it was a remix. It wasn't the original. So it got, it got credited oh, as the remix okay. to her original record. Okay, that's yes. when remixes was crazy. Right? Yes, yes, yes. When people started doing it. Yes. What, what's the first thing you did for Big? Hypnotize. Hypnotize was the first record you worked on for Big? Mm -hmm. How did you, who came up with that? Who said we gonna grab Roz by Herb Alpert? Me. You did? Mm -hmm. What did you hear in that record that made you say? Coney Island. When I was growing up, Grandmaster Flowers used to DJ in Coney Island. Shout out to Grandmaster Flowers. Grandmaster Flowers. And we go, and I don't know if Clark might have been later, like right when I was in high school, but Coney Island was the place where everybody from Brooklyn would come and hear all the latest music. Shout yeah. out to DJ Clark Kent, too. Of course. And Coney Island was a place that we all went on Easter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when we had our new outfits on, yeah. Pops and Moms would drive us to Coney Island for a yeah. day of fun at Coney Island in the beach. And Grandmaster D. And uh, Master D. Uh, from Houdini? No, from Best Star. Other, okay. Um, he, just, he just passed away. Coney Island. We <coughs> all shoot to Coney Island and hear all these records. And I'd get on this ride called a Himalaya, and the Himalaya would be this ride you get around and go around and then go back. People that are not from New York do not understand <laughs> yeah. the Himalaya. Let me explain real quickly what the Himalaya is. The Himalaya was a ride that you would get on and it would go up and down yeah, like this, at a but it would fly around in a circle <laughs> yes. at about 90 miles an hour yeah. and playing the hottest music that was out during that time while you ride the Himalaya, then it would stop and everybody would go crazy thinking they gonna get off, then it crank back up and go backwards. backwards. <laughs> and go backwards. Go backwards. I see people wigs fly off on yeah. the Himalayan, I see people throw up on other people on the Himalayan. The Himalayan was an ill ride. It was an ride, but if you got on it with a girl, yes, because the way it moved so fast, it would smash you up against her as it was going. So you see a bunch of dudes smashed up against a girl. And then when it went backwards, it smashed up, smash up against, up against you the thing. Because yeah. of the centrifugal, the centrifugal force. Right. <laughs> that word, that shit. Centrifugal force. Yeah, yeah. would force her up against you. So every dude wanted to get on. Right, the heavy land. So. And I remember Rise would come on because he'd let the da -na -na -na, and the ride would start off slow. Da -na -na -na, you play with your girl, then it start getting faster. Da -na -na -na, then by the time it got to da -na -na -na, da -na -na -na, do you spin it? I'm like, oh my God. Then you get off and dance. And you just see a crowd of people, just girls and dudes dancing with each other. And I just said, that build up to that break was one of the illness. And I said, one day, I'm going to get a chance. So when we Puff took us to Trinidad, uh-huh. And I was like, this. Had you ever been to Trinidad before? Never. Okay. It was the illest. And I said, Big is going to love this. I mean, so me and Ron got busy, and he did. So y'all put that, goo. We put all that in. Because that's not in the, in the regular Yeah, we record. put all that in. That's what I'm saying. We did all extra that. Extra thumping bass line, yeah. extra drums. played drum. it over, extra drums, played the bass over, and the chords. Right. And so the sample is in there, because of course the sample is in there. But if you're... Impresario, you hear the, the bass line, the keys, the ooh, the extra hi hats, the extra double kicks, and the double hot and the double snares, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what Absolutely. we do. Absolutely. So after y'all do Hypnotize, you just had a beat. There's no name for the song. Um, when did it become Hypnotize? Did Big call it Hypnotize? Where yeah. did all of it? Because I'm always he, interested he, he in those. He did. He called it Hypnotize. Where did the Biggie, 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 can't you see? Him. That's him. Him. That's how that. I walked into the studio and he was sitting in there by himself. Puff had already got off the plane and played it for him before I got a chance. Right. So when I got to the studio, Biggie already heard us. When I walked in, it was just big because C's and them had went up to Branson to go get, get a job what, what they needed. Yeah, yeah get the So smoke, Big smoke. was in there by himself. So when I walked in, he said, yo, Derek, this is my <laughs> single. He ain't called me that. Right. Yo, Derek, this is my single. So I'm like, oh, my God. So I go sit next to him. He said, you got to hear this. Beat is playing. He told Steve Dent, whoever's in there, turn it up. I mean, turn it down. He turned it down. He said, Biggie, 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 can't you? He whispered it in my ear. Wow. You know, sometimes your words is him. And I said, uh, I said cool. <laughs> <laughs> I ran to the motherfucking door. Ah! Ah! I got a hit record. Right. Now, mind you, the Benjamins is already out. Really? Tracy Lee is already out. You did. Oh my God, bro. Right, all these records me? are out before Hypnotize, but wait this, minute, one, is gonna, this one is going to spend 10,000 times. You did the Tracy Lee record? And everywhere that my crew Yes, go. that's me on the hook with him. You know it gets down. down. Yes. Man, that record. That's, 
Binary groove. Yeah, binary groove. Wow, you know how to snatch some shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then you said, what else? The other one you said? The, the Benjamins, Benjamins was the already out? The original Benjamins, when it was just Puff, Jadakiss, and Sheik. Remember, we dropped it in 96 as just that. There was no right. Kim. There was no chorus. There was no Biggie. And we thought that was it. So in 96, I got the Benjamins, Cone Rocker Party, uh, What's Up Star, and Tracy Lee out. Damn. I ain't got to hypnotize yet. Okay. So, so I'm thinking, I'm good. But right. then he comes and says, Biggie, 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 can't you see? I'm like, this is gonna spend 10,000 times a day. I mean, a week. Right. This is gonna take me to a whole nother level. And he wanted it to go. He was like, this is my single. So everything was precision and precise. I remember years ago, when you knew I did the Benjamins and Hypnotize, we were on the air and you said, I still hypnotize, I still like hypnotize better. You said yeah. that to me one time. You know why? No. Because <laughs> one time Puff was doing an in-store for Sean John, and this is before Life After Death had come out. Right. And I guess people, you guys might have been waiting for him at the studio. Remember the studio was next to Bob Lou's? Right, right, right. That, right. that nightclub. Right. right. So I'm driving down 34th Street, and I see Puff, and I say, what's up? I just roll the window down. I had a pathfinder. I roll the window down. I said, Puff. What's good? He said, yo, where you going? Yo, my car's late. They wait for me at the studio. Take me. So I'm like, bet. So he gets in the car with me, and we rolling. And he go, yo, you got a sound system in here? Listen to this shit I just did with Big. And he put the fucking CD in, oh, and it was fucking hypnotized. Oh. But the Biggie, 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 the girls wasn't on it yet. Right, okay, I just damn. heard the, eh, oh. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, my God. And I, and I had like four 15s in the back. I had, I had no trunk. You know how nigger it's from. Yeah, yeah. I had no trunk. No like suitcase room. No suitcase room. It was a 93 <laughs> Pathfinder. I just got it. Took it to Jersey. Had the whole shit built out. Oh, four shit. 15, six amps, tweeters. The top of my shit used to rattle. Like, I turned this shit up, boom, boom, boom. When I pull up to, to uh, Daddy's house, there's a crew harving them out there waiting for Puff. I turn the music down and say, "Yo, oh, Puff, come on, man, we gotta go." Puff jumps out and walks away. Forgets the CD. Forgets the CD before I pull up. That nigga say, "Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> nigga I need, give me that. I need that. I need that. Give I me need that. that. I, I need like, that. Damn, I knew I had something that if I'd have had it today. You know, I didn't know anything was ever going to happen to Big. Right, right. But if I had that shit in my possession, that was going to be a piece of fucking history. Would it? I knew it. And it did. Who are the girls? That's Pam. The... That's Pam from Total. That's right. only Pam from only Total. Only Pam. Only Pam. Y'all laying it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was saying the Benjamins, remember, the Benjamins was only three people on it. So this is 96. So we're currently saying this shit is rattling so much through the hoods of America. Right. We got to remix it. So we started the remix early. So get Kim in the studio. By now, Big is on his way to LA for that infamous trip. Right. So he takes that beat with him and victory. So fast forward, got Kim in the studio. She comes in. She doesn't blaze it initially. Me and Jacob York come back in the next day with her. Then that's what you get, the new one. Want to bumble with the beat. Right. I jumps on a plane. Do you remember the, the first set of lyrics that, that she hit? I have them. I oh, still, you really do? I saved everything that I was a part oh, of. So I still have so her original verse. I have Biggie's original verses from things that he went in and changed to. I have some of them on cassettes and tapes. So I get on a plane. Was it, was it oh, my easy or <laughs> hard? I'm, I'm before you get on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> was it easy or hard at that time to tell Kim that ain't it? Um, when she was by herself, it was hard because Biggie wasn't around. Right. Remember, at that time, Big pretty much did, you know, 82% of the work for them as far as the writing goes. Right. Or at least laid the foundation. Right. The Benjamins was one of the very first, if not the first, but a couple of shots where she had a chance to go and just without him, using his tutelage. Right. And she did a great job on the first one. We ended up using like six bars of what she did the first time. But then I had to go back in with her the second time and say, you know, if Big was here, mm. what would it have been? Oh, you want to bumble with the B, huh? Like, like it was almost like she was mad at me, nigga. Right. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, like that was directed towards yeah, you. It wasn't direct. It wasn't, but that's how. on your whole family. But that's how it felt. That's the vibe she needed to get in, and 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 she crushed it. Right. So, that that's how that. One felt. of one yeah. of the most famous versus fucking verses. Male or female? Male or female? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Male or female? Absolutely. So did you already have Biggs 
rap or they big? No, do no, that? no. I'm about to tell you when I got on the plane. All right, get on the plane. Now we're getting on the plane, plane. We're on the plane, nigga. This is crazy. So I jumped on the plane to go because we finished Big's album. Sent it to him. He heard it. For the people that don't know, Big heard his old album the way y'all heard it. Okay. The way y'all heard it. The way we heard Life After Death is how he heard it. How he heard it. We finished it. Puff gave me a week off. Fly to LA. I'm on Smoke Fest, Fuck Fest 97. <laughs> 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 I ain't calling nobody. Right. I ain't doing shit. Right. Seven o'clock in the morning, phone ring, ring, ring. I'm staying at the Argyle Hotel on Sunset, me and Mark Pitts. Hey, yo, I know you're not in LA and you ain't come see me. It's B.I.G. Fuck. We jump to the car, go to his hotel, wherever that was that he was staying at the week he got killed. Get, in, get up to the floor and it's just Jamaica. God damn, it's weed coming all through the hallways. <laughs> Four food trays outside the door. You know, them shits with the white things. And yeah, it just, yeah, yeah. it's full of them. <laughs> it's just everywhere. d rock C's, big, everybody. And all I hear is Victory playing and his verse on it. And my eyes are like, what the fuck That's is the first that? time you heard it. His verse. His I heard verse. the beat. Because you did the beat, right? No, Stevie did that one. Okay. Right. I must have listened to that shit 17,000 times. I still haven't played him Kim yet. I have Kim right here. He don't know it. Because I'm listening to Victory. Oh, oh, you're hearing Victory. I'm hearing Victory in okay. LA in his hotel room. Wow. I got Kim's vocals from New York. I want to play him. Didn't know he did Victory. Then he, after I listened to Victory 47,000 times, then he played the Benjamins. He did his verse for the Benjamins out there over the original. Now I'm tearing. Now just tears was coming wow, down my eyes and shit. Damn. I'm like, oh my God. Everybody, if you so know, then I you play know the him, verse. So you then I the play verse. him little Kim's verse. My bitch, get down we got now. We eat all the more food. Roll up. <laughs> we just wilding. Then we go to the party that night. See you, see everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. fucking crazy, yeah. bro. So I saw him. Because the morning, we all picture us going home. All of y'all in the studio, like yeah. together, and yeah. it's like, okay, you're gonna go, and then Big's writing this, and then Kim's gonna say this, mm -hmm. and then he's gonna come back. You know, I've been had skills, Chris Styles skills, high yeah, builder. Yeah. We think all that shit happens just like that all yeah, the time. Yeah, nah, uh, uh. That he was in L.A. Did his first with Puff. You know what I'm saying? Like Puff coached him through that. Well, you know, Puff was there for that one. I right. Was, I was there for the original and Kim. And then after he passed, I had to make his part special. So I changed the beat after he passed. You did? Yeah. Oh, the, to the, 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 to the, Michael, the Michael Jackson, Jackson Yeah, shit. I changed it after da, da, he passed. Because da, 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 da. we were going to keep it the original because it was the original. It was remixed. But once he passed, we was like, we got to make his part special. Yeah. So I switched yeah. it up. Yeah, for for up. two people that were at that party, what do you remember? <laughs> OK. It's a little detailed. I wasn't in the trucks with them. I was riding with Mark Pitts in a limo. Okay. And I brought Tracy Lee with us out there because Trey and Big had made a record together called yes. Keep Your Hands High. That's right. Right. So they were cool. Trey was going to open the tour that we were planning. Trey was going to be the opening act. Mm -hmm. So we get to the L.A. in the party, and we're in a limousine, but we couldn't make the turn into the driveway because we had a stretch. Mm -hmm. So they made us go around the other way and come back on the opposite side. So when we left, our limo was facing this way and the trucks were going that way. I remember being in the party. I remember smoking. I remember you on the mic. Uh, I think Kenny Burns was Kenny there. Kenny Burns was on the mic. A DJ Ace was DJ DJing. Ace, right. I we remember. were yelling, show me the money. Because right. Jerry Maguire was out. Right. And the terminology was show me the show money me the for money. the time. I remember us partying, Big's leg was still messed up, so he was sitting most mm -hmm. of the time. I had a friend from Brooklyn named Quam who was out there with us. And you know, we, we all fucked up, women everywhere, and Quam is dancing with this chick, and she had on one of them big ass hats, like, you know. And so Quam took it off and put it on. We having fun, they right. just chilling. So Quam, as he's dancing with the girl, I'm dancing next to him with a girl, he says, yo, I gotta meet Big, yo. My life will not be, he's sitting right there. Please, Dot, introduce me to him. I said, all right, cool. So I walk over to the table. I say, yo, B.I.G., <clears throat> I want you to meet my man. Big said, well, that's your man? And I said, yeah, that's my man. I want you to meet He said, yo, yo, Dot, I mean, Derek, that's your man? 
I said, yeah. So now I'm starting to get like, what, what's that? Like, like he recognizes him or something? Mm -hmm. So Kwame is feeling some type of way. He said, no, t yo, is that your man man? I said, that's my man man, Brooklyn style. Like, what's up, Big? He said, well, tell him to take that motherfucking hat off. <laughs> <laughs> And we bust out laughing. <laughs> and Vin gave him a pal. He was like, yo, bro, he's like, what's up? You ask your man, I'm your man. That's and that was crazy. funny. That was funny. So, and you know, I know that what you're saying, and I'm not even doubting it. I don't think anybody that's watching this should doubt the fact that Big didn't call him Dot, he called him Derek. Call me because Derek. the nigga called me Edwin. <laughs> the fucking time. And I called him Christopher. Yeah, Chris. I never called the nigga Big. I, I, I have a drop for me. He says, call Derek in here. I have him as, as my drop. It's called Derek in here. Right. Yeah, so he called me Derek. Yeah, and he called, now it's Christopher. <laughs> so I'm at the party, and yeah. he's like, you said he sat down yeah. the whole time. Pretty much. So I'm sitting there kicking with him for a minute, and he's like, yo, take this bottle of Dom P and drink half the shit. I said, how the fuck I'm fucked up? I can't drink <laughs> half a bottle. He said, well, go give it to some bitches. And, <laughs> and then bring it back to me half full. <laughs> right. I'm like, bet. So I'm running around the party. I'm giving everybody Pouring champagne, pouring the niggas' yeah, cups. Yeah, 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 well, right. I bring it back to Big. <laughs> I give it to him at the halfway point. The <laughs> nigga pull out a bottle of Grandma Ye, fill the shit back <laughs> and handed it to me. Real talk, man. And when yeah. those lights came on, I have a Polaroid picture of me, Big, Puff, Jermaine Dupri, Stevie J. Yeah, Jermaine was there, yep. And Gene. Gene, okay. Yeah. And you remember the niggas with the Polaroids? And this probably happened... 20 minutes before they put turned the lights on. Okay. And the nigga looked at me and said, are you going to Nas and, and Steve Stout's party? Right. They had a party that night. Yes. And I said, yeah, I'm going. And he said, do you want to ride with us? And I had a Corvette. I'm feeling myself, nigga. Right, I'm right, getting right. Young TV Raps money. Right. Every time I touch down, I got a drop top. Right, right, right. So I got a vet in the parking lot. And I'm like, nah, I'm good, Christopher. Right. And he's like, OK, Edwin. <laughs> and I bounced it. Right. My pager goes off when I'm at the party. Uh, Call back and they say, yo, come to Mount C. The time not big, I shot. I'm the worst. We get there, it's police everywhere. When we leave, when them lights come on, we delayed for a minute, if you remember. We didn't leave right, right. right away. So by the time we get to the front, it's like crickets. And I remember dapping everybody up. If I remember correctly, we were going to Steve Styles' party, but I think we were going to stop at the lab first or the studio first. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly if we were going or the whole entourage was going. But I remember dapping everybody up, and we went to our limo, but our limo had to pull out that way. We pull out. Big of them went towards the north. Right, towards the north. And y'all had to go towards the south. Because the south is towards the airport, and the north was toward, like, if you look at L.A., the mountains in front of you. All that Hollywood sign and shit is in front of you on that street. So you had to go straight so, up. So, on to, so to meet them here, we had to go out, right, 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 to get back around. By the time we got to that second or third right, it's pandemonium. We don't hear the shots, we don't, because we already around the corner. It's pandemonium. And somebody just literally drives up to the limo and says, I think Puffy got, uh, Puff got shot. And we're like, get the fuck out of here. So we make the final turn, and that's when we see cops, I mean, uh, we see the girls screaming, everything going on, and some dude just yells across the street, they got big man. And so somebody says, I think they taking him to the hospital. So we asked the driver, what's the nearest hospital? And he told us, see, see the, the cyanide. cyanide. Yeah. So we rushed to see the cyanide, jump out the car. Chris Latimer's in the front. Right. So me and Chris Latimer trying to push, 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 push. I push, push, because they're not trying to let us in. D-Rock and all of them are in. I pushed no. Chris Latimer. Chris Latimer got yeah. in. Chris Latimer got in. I wouldn't get, I couldn't get in. They, they hit my leg in the door. So I'm like, oh, fuck. So I back out the door, and I'm standing outside. Girls is crying. Everybody's crying. And if you see that picture of, somebody took a picture from in front of the hospital, and there's somebody standing and then you can see, I think, is it Trey Wop? Or somebody's over here. And that's me standing there because somebody said, fuck bad boy, while it's going on. And I turned around and I just saw a flash like, shh, shh. And then I see C's come out the side door mm. screaming. Yeah, that's when we knew. That's when we knew. I was standing right there C's because came out Leote the side was working with Puff at right, that time. Right, Leote, yeah. And, and he kept trying to get her because he needed her for something. And they wouldn't let her in. I had to talk to the police because one of the police recognized me and kept telling them, this is Puff's assistant, right. executive assistant. She needs to be in there. And she went in. We're all milling about outside. And C's came out screaming. And all of and us knew that what Big was going. That's when, I knew, uh, I that's when we knew. When did you leave? Because I couldn't leave. They got us out the next morning. They gave, okay. us, they gave us a police escort. They came to the Argyle. Everybody associated. They said, y'all have to get out of here. So I called over to the hotel. Hillary Weston had just left. 
the night. She didn't come to the party. Right. She landed in LA, got the news. Hillary she was she didn't, uh, Kim's manager for right. a long time. But she Kim. worked with Big before that. Yes. So as soon as she touched down, she was on a plane back. She didn't even get to go home. They came to our hotel six, seven in the morning. We had three police escorts. There was only two seats left on the plane. They put me and Mark in the back of the plane, the last two seats in the bathroom that don't even go back. <laughs> that shit, it was a six hour flight. It felt like 17 because everybody on the plane was so sorry. Everybody knew what happened. Right. And they're coming back to the back thing. It was right. like, you know what I'm saying? So we trying to sleep. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So by, we landed. I had to call Wayne Barrow was it there. I called Wayne Barrow Ooh. on the phone. Harv, I called Harv. Like there was people that wasn't there. I had to right. call and say, "Yo, they just they got our guy." Yeah, Which Foxy place? was in the same hotel that I was in, uh -huh. and remember she was with Corrupt right. at the that time. time. Okay, so Corrupt was in the hotel too. So Foxy somehow I ended up in her room. We were on the same floor, and she was on the phone with Jay, cause Jay wasn't in that life. Right. Okay, and he didn't believe her. She handed me the phone, and I told Jay. And I could hear him drop the phone and sob, you know, because we were all like in this funk. And I was like, where's Corrupt? And he was actually somewhere. He probably going to deny the shit, but this is the truth. She told me he was hiding in the hotel because nobody knew where that shit came from. And he was afraid that, you know, Pac yes, had already been killed, yeah, that associated. he's associated with death row and that somebody would do him some harm. That was so crazy. I, 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 I'll tell you something, man. That was a foggy time, bro. It was foggy. And it was sad. It was disgusting. And one thing that I will never, ever forgive people for is the way the West Coast on the radio handle it compared to how we handle Tupac's death. Mm. When Pac got killed, when it was announced that night, I was on my way to Nassau Coliseum. Mm. Somebody got that on tape. Nas used it on the, on the Death Row East song from one of his albums, King's Disease 2. And he allowed me to go on stage and tell people that Pac had died that night. Mm. The East Coast radio handled it. Angie was on the, on the air yeah. crying. That's yeah. how I knew. The yeah. East Coast handled it like, oh my God, Pac is dead. This is messed up. We got to put an end to this. He was a great art. Everybody that called in had something nice to say. When I got up the next morning and listened to West Coast radio the night after, day after Big got shot, they were so vile and disgusting and hateful. Mm. He had no business having his fat ass out here. Wow. He knew we didn't like him. Wow. Good. Wow. Good for him. Wow. He should have been messing with death row. And it was disgusting, bro. Wow. Like they had no humanity, no feelings for, for Big as a person whatsoever, man. Wow. It, it was I, I, wasn't a, I wasn't aware of that. Another quick story. Don Poole was there. He got hit by a car that night, so he was in Cedar Sinai. He didn't get to come to the party. He wow. was in Cedar Sinai when they brought Big to the hospital. He, Don Poole was in the hospital with a with a broken leg or fibula. Yeah, he got hit he by got a hit car, car before right on last year before the party. So he had to go to the hospital. Wow! And then Big comes to the same hospital. So you telling in. me that before hypnotized victory was already done? Because you said when you went to Big's room. To play him the little Kim piece, he was playing Victory. He played his verse for Victory. He played I, his I, verse I, for I Victory. hadn't heard it Puff yet. Puff wasn't on it yet. Mm-mm. How did that be? Was that supposed to be a big record? Mm-mm. It Victory? was always going to be a Puff. Yes. Big Buster? Buster came after. Who got Buster? Puffy, probably. Was it just that simple? Like, what were y'all motherfuckers thinking about, man? Because y'all was coming up with some shit. I mean, record making. That's what I'm trying to explain to everybody. If, if it was as simple as just putting a beat and an artist in the room, you know, I'd have Angeletti Island right now. I'd be living on Angeletti Island. It, right. it wasn't that simple. It took storyboarding. The way we approach records was storyboarding like a movie. Option A, option B, you know, you might want De Niro, but you, you know, who's the best person for the job type of thing. Right. You know what I mean? So we storyboarded, it was movie makers. Your favorite song off of Life After Death? <laughs> Probably The World Is Filled. Okay. And the reason why is because of how it got made. But I also like Somebody Gotta Die. Right. That was, that was you know, that and Ten Crack Commandments. Ten Crack Commandments was so fire, dog. Ten Crack Commandments. Today's agenda. Got the two kids. That's, <laughs> that's one of my favorites because Big Stretch had already been killed. 
And he said, Big gave him a nod in the song. Stretch, stretch had died? Stretch, said, yeah. Because no, remember, sure. Stretch, I lost three in a row, bro. Wow. I lost three in a row. Wow. Pac got shot in quad. That was 94. Stretch was with him. To the day that he got shot in 95, Stretch got killed in Queens. Mm. Pac gets killed in 96. Big gets killed in 97. Jesus. So it was like back to back. And I always loved Big for that line, word to Stretch, I bet they pussy. Mm. You know what I mean? So he, he acknowledged my man. You know, so I really, I really loved him for that. That's one of my favorites, man. But that album, bro, that's a masterpiece, bro. Thank and you. And it's a shame that he didn't get to live to... To perform it. Yeah, Sky's the Limit is on there. It gives us so many dope fucking records on there, man. Yeah, We're going to take a short break. We got more Derek D. Dot Angelady. This is, come on, son, the podcast, baby. Come on, shit. History, history. <laughs> come on, son, 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 son. Come yes, sir. On, come on, son. Come on, we are back with more. Come on, son. Derek D. Dot, Angeletti, who big, rest in peace, affectionately known as Derek. <laughs> That's it. You never call him Dot. Derek. 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 Me, Edwin. Yeah. All the fucking time. I remember getting high with Big. <laughs> crush on you video. I was fucked up. That was one nigga. You, you smoked with him, right? Yeah, absolutely. I could smoke with him, man. Yeah, I smoked with him. Who the illest niggas you ever smoked with? Big. Big. Snoop. Snoop, absolutely. You ever smoke with Pop? No. Well, actually, at Howard University, we did. Okay. But it wasn't a smoke fest. It was like a little L passed around, but I love, like 11 niggas. So, um, Smoke Dizza gets busy. Oh, that's it. <laughs> smoke Dizza gets busy. Method Red. Uh, I never smoked with Red, actually. Oh, I've been in the studio God. where he smoked, but we never just went ham. Nah, I Meth, smoked with them niggas Meth, in LA, yeah, bro. Meth, yeah. I smoked with them. They remember when the House of Blues? They stayed across the street. Oh, okay. They had a show, and I smoked with them niggas before the show started. I went yeah. backstage with them. We actually walked across the street and said, fuck the limo. Fuck <laughs> the limo from there, yeah, right, right over there. there. Right. Whole crew niggas walk across the street. We go through the back door. We get there. I'm behind stage. I'm fucked up. I'm living in L.A. at the time. I said, yo, I'm going to go stand in front of the stage and watch the show. And they came out, and then I went home. <laughs> 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 I was fucked up. I was fucked up. I was fucked up. Fucked up. Yeah, yeah, Bro. Yeah. They got busy. They got one busy. of the greatest. Now, hip hop albums in them days, you guys, like you said, created albums like a movie, right? Yes. You had plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Right. If this shit don't work, then we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Yes. You worked with a lot of people yes. that you wanted to work with. Was it a lot easier to get people to come in at that time? Or was it the, you know, based super? On, ba yeah, based on, you know, Puff was Puff at the time. So, yeah, he used his cachet. Right. And, you know, and the fact that Big was nice. Super. You know, and the fact that our track record was, you know, we were laying them down. Right. So it wasn't, you know, Who why, did, why wouldn't you want to come? And Clark Kent did Brooklyn Finals. Clark Kent, I believe, yes. Did Who did Finals. I Love the Dough? Uh, I Love the Dough was Easy Mo B. Incredible. 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 Easy Mo B is probably, I think he's the only cat from the East Coast that worked with Big and Pac. Big and Pac. He's one yeah, of the greatest Yeah, Easy Mo B. I Love the Dough was such, ooh. Yeah, and he did Going Back to Cali. He did that too? Yes. Yes. Was it hard for you like it was hard for me to listen to that record after Big Dot? The whole album was hard to listen to, but yes, going back to Cali was hard because I heard stories is that it was playing out there while he was there. Like, people were playing. I don't know how his album... She says something. She told a story about going back to Cali, them hearing it with somebody. I don't remember, but it was hard listening to that whole album, especially because I'm the one who sets it off. Right. Previously on Ready to Die. Yes. So it's like, shit, listening. And then I'm the one at all the interludes. You know, that's me laughing. Faith, and I'm laughing. And right. I'm going to get you, motherfucker. I'm going to get you. That's all me. You right. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was hard to listen to. It was definitely Bro, hard to listen to. let's talk about interludes and the way records were made. And let's talk about probably the funniest. Two, to me, the two funniest interludes probably in hip-hop history is the what's the name get at you? Who? These nuts. Yeah, <laughs> right. The fucking yeah, yeah. And the fucking mad rapper. Oh my God. Where did the fucking mad rapper come from? Is that an alter ego of D Dot? I hope not. Uh, but it probably was, yeah, at the time. I mean, it just came from that East Coast, West Coast beef. We were sitting in the studio one day. Uh huh. And you remember back then when, you, when you, your show and different shows, when videos came out, it got announced. They would come in, so and so premiere at eight o'clock. You know right. what time oh, is yeah. coming on? We doing, and they, they somebody ran to the studio, said, they, you know, Death Row Pac and the new video coming out. 
And we like, oh, well, you know, because we study everything. So we watching, we, we got TVs on, we turn music off, we look, and we like, it was hit him up. Oh. Oh my God, they serious. They not Scathing. fucking playing. We looking around like, yo. And you know, big man immediately wants to slice throats, you know? Right. That's where the concept of, of dig him up came from. That's okay. what people like, did he do a song called Dig Him Up? Nah, but it, it, came, it came, after he passed, it came up. So I sat there and I said, this is not gonna work. Like, we can't, we can't be the aggressors. Like, this is not our style. Uh -huh. We're about the money, we're about the flavor. So we're gonna kill him with kindness. And I don't know how or what, I just thought that everybody was mad at us. We was getting shitted on in New York. You know, rappers in New York was killing mm -hmm. us. Uh, East Coast kills was killing us. Now the West Coast is killing us. We like got a target on our back. So I was like, what's the best way to hurt somebody's feelings? Just make fun of them. Right. So I'm gonna make fun of everybody. It's nobody specific, <clears throat> but I'm gonna be like, hey, yo, hey, yo, uh. Right. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna go, and this is another opportunity for me to show my talent. So I just came up with the voice. My voice is naturally deep, so I figured I can't do it like that. They're gonna know it's me. Plus I was trying to be in cog, you know right. what I'm saying? So, so I was the Mad Rapper the first time you did it on 50's joint? No, that was much later. The first time I did the Mad Rapper was on Life After Death. The fuck out of here. Right yeah, 50 was half, way after. Yeah, way after, four, right. three years after that. Right. Two years after that. First time I even thought of the concept, I did it on Life After Death. And Shay was the front desk girl, for real. Right. And Trevin Jones was really Puff's cousin, who was the studio manager, and he really talked like, welcome, <laughs> the fuck welcome out of here. to Bad Boy. <laughs> That's a real person, That's Trevin Jones. That's his real Jones. name, Trevin Jones. I thought y'all made up and he's real, And he's Puffy's real cousin. And Shay was a real girl. That was her name. She worked at the front desk. Right. Hi, my name is Shay. Right, I'm from... She, was, she wasn't from New Rochelle, but okay. she made her say, I'm from New Rochelle. Right. And why are you so mad? You know, fuck that. Fuck who the fuck is you? <laughs> 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 Bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sit your ass down. My fourth album. Uh, yeah. that, that shit was all right, bro. I got John Blaze. Yeah. That shit is always my favorite shit. I, my, my shit is John Blaze. And I think you wanted to say, recognize. But recognize. You, said, respect. Yeah, yeah, respect. Respect. Yeah, whatever. Oh, whatever came out, I left. And it's actually three more minutes to it. It's like another two Oh, minutes. come on. But Are we, you kidding me? Yeah, we cut it off because at the time... We didn't know what it took to make a double album. A double album had to be a certain amount of time. Right. So when we mastered it, we just mastered it short. But then when we got to mastering, we was two and a half minutes short of a double album. That's why Miss Wallace's interlude is so long okay. at the end, because we had to extend it just to get it to make a double album. We couldn't find the extended mix because we never, I mean, we couldn't find the extended Mad Rapper, Mad Rapper because we never mixed it. We mixed it cut off. And fuck is that, who is your telling That's how we mixed right. it and just, Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, so. I got, did Mar Lawrence come on? How I see it. Boom, right, right, uh, yeah. right. Yeah. Raid on the top with short like leprechauns. Is that really, was that really directed at Nas? I have no idea. That's what C said. Yeah. C I'm, said I'm, I'm, kicking the door I'm was sure. directed at Nas. Son, I'm surprised you run with them. I keep thinking yeah. they got coming them because they nothing but dicks trying to show up like nitro and dynamite sticks. Yeah, and I smoke hydro, rock diamonds, that's sick. Get paid off my flows. Yeah. I'm with my own clique. Take trips to take trips to Cairo, Cairo lay with, with your bitch. bitch. I bet you yeah. wish you was rich, you fucking bitch. When I see you, I'll kick in the door. That nigga big was. Oh was man, you Ill, understand? Man. You understand sitting in them, sitting, you, in, them, you, sitting you, in them sessions? I'm like, did he just say that, nigga? You were there during, I would say, big. Getting nicer and nicer. The evolution. The evolution right is there. the word that right I'm looking there, for. From the from ready to die to the voice change structure, to the flow structure, to the attitude. In Hypnotize, he's smiling and dancing. Ready to die, there was absolutely no smiling on campus. <laughs> no, not at all. There was no happiness here. Life after death was kind of like, I'm getting the hang of this shit, and the music is just next level. The atmosphere is next level. My team wants it the way I want it. So it, you could see like an athlete developing to become this all-star and become a perennial 
all-star. It was right. on its way. He hadn't even done his best shit yet. Right. That's what I'm saying. And, he, and pretty much at a time when Death Row was selling a shitload of tons and tons of records, you guys really, Bad Boy, had New York on, on your back, man. Uh, y'all really, y'all really carried us through. Yeah. You were around during them days. What was Big? How did Big really feel about Jay? Did he feel like that that was good competition? Did they really bounce off of each other as far as? Two, they were two different people. There was no, um, there was no. When I say no competition, meaning there was competition. This is this is a blood sport. Right. We in. They want to be the number one. What purpose and sense does it make to be in it if that's not at least an attempt? But it wasn't to be number one to bring the other one down. Mm -hmm. You know, it was we gonna be the two together, Starsky and Hutch type shit. Right. So it's really no one, one A, one B type of thing. It was the competition. It was none as far as you know them trying to hurt each other, none of like that. It was strictly love. They went to the same high school. Big, that's all he wanted to do was rock with Jay, because Jay had that flavor, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, my experience with them was love. Easy Mo B tells the story on one of his podcasts. We were in the studio working on I Love the Dough, and Big and Jay came in the studio, and they pretended like they was going to rhyme and play for a little while. We'll be back. <laughs> and never came back. And that was the last time Easy Mo B saw Big. Wow. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. That's Yo, so during this time, Y'all are rocking like crazy. Like, it's Bad Boy. When did Bad Boy start to take a turn to where it wasn't really the Bad Boy that we knew anymore? And how, often, how far after Big Pass was this? I mean, you don't have to tell me that. I left in 98. Why? Um, I just, I did what I thought the most I can do. I did Biggie, Puff's album, No Way Out. I did Mace's Harlem World. I did The Locks, Money, Power, Respect. I did Faith's second album and I did Carl Thomas's first album, and then I left because there was really nothing else for me to do. And then I got my Crazy Cat deal, and I did Black Rob as an executive producer, hired executive producer. But once the locks start going through their drama and May started, started mm -hmm. having them rumblings, I was like, yeah, it might be time. I made my mark. I'm executive producer, a and on all those albums. I did beats on all of them, Mad Rap and Lose. I think I made a, a, a very impactful mark that I need to now go and try my hand at my own shit. Right. Staying there, I wouldn't have had the same albums and artists to work on. Because after them, think about it, would have been who? You know, that I would have worked on would have been Black Rob, maybe Shine, maybe, mm -hmm. or Loon. Not G Depp. G Depp, which, was, you know, which wasn't bad, but it didn't have the same je ne sais quoi that I was looking for, if you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, for yeah. my career. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, well, did, were you the first one to leave? Mm -hmm. No, remember Harv, the only reason I was the A&R because Harv left in 96 to go try his hand at RCA. Okay. Remember he was doing SWV and all of them. Right. So there was an empty spot. That's when Puff gave me the A&R job. So that's when I took that job. So, um, yeah, but I, I, I don't know if I was the first one to leave, no. And I actually went to Puff and said, can I do my crazy cat deal with him at Bad Boy? But I don't think the timing was right. So he said, nah, so I went to Columbia. Right. That was that. The Columbia gave you a nice deal? They gave me a very nice deal. For, for, were you and Ron still together at this point? Or Ron? Nah, was... Ron. I mean, we're still making beats, but I was Crazy Cat was mine. Right. Yeah, Crazy Cat was mine. Right, yes. right. How did you end up with 50? Because y'all stirred up a lot of shit. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> fate. Uh, I didn't even know 50 when we did that record. I wasn't even in the studio with him. He did that record on his own. Wow. Rich Nice. Who was Big the up Rich Nice. Rich Nice. My man, Rich, what up? Rich, what up, Rich? He was working with Trackmasters. And I'm known at the time now, I'm not just a beat maker, I'm a producer. I write hooks. I'm on things. So Rich called me and said, I need a hook for this record we got, this kid 50 Cent. So I'm holding. You didn't know nothing about him. I knew he was signed to Trackmasters because I'm on Columbia, but he wasn't, right. it wasn't no rumblings about him yet. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Um, and he comes to Jimmy Henchman Studio because I was holding down Henchman Studio. It's one, two in the morning, and he plays me this record, and I'm blown away. It's crazy. I'm like, that's a perfect Mad Rapper record. You sound, <laughs> that should be my record. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's perfect. But he had some lines in it. I think he had a Nas line. A Mariah and Tommy was the first before he changed it to Mary and Case. It was right. originally Mariah and Tommy, but politically, you know, he couldn't say no, that. No, 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 no. So 
We do the record. I do the hook right then and there. This ain't serious. Be broke can't make you delirious. Next day or two days later, Polka told, yo, you killed it. We crushed it. 50 loves it. Da, 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 da. I meet him like a couple weeks later. Right. And yeah, yo. And then we hit the road. Wow. That was it. And that's how I got my relationship with 50. But it yo, wasn't why do you think, you said on the record, this ain't serious. Yes. You, it's, it's clear as day. Yeah. When I heard it, I was like, this is fucking hilarious. That's why I said it. Because right. I knew my constituents was going to be heated. And they were still, even if I said, this why, ain't why serious. Why niggas so heated? Because, you know, in hip hop, you can't mention someone else's name. They can mention yours all day. But, you know, these cats get a little moist when you mention right. their name. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happened. A few people got a little moist. That's probably one of the best <laughs> things that happened to Fifth. Because Jay goes on and says, I'm about a dollar. Who the fuck, fuck is 50, 50 cent? cent? He called me to tell me he was going to do that on Angie's show, live. Uh-huh. He said, yo, that record is high. You know, do you like the record? Yeah, it's high. Y'all did your thing, but I'm going to have to spank you, man. And that's how it should have been handled by everybody. Right. Said all this anger and all this wanting to There's fight. There was a and lot of things. anger, man. And then there was people like you to say, why didn't you mention my name? There was some people like, <laughs> exactly. I wanted to be on that. Mention I wanted me. to be on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some more, Paul. Give more. me some more juice. But niggas just got so angry, and I'm like, y'all not listening to this chorus? <laughs> D-Dot is on there saying, this, this ain't serious. serious. You broke can make, make you delirious. delirious. <laughs> that's the, that lightens the record up. That's what I thought it was going to do. That's the reason I got on it. I was like, because people are going to be getting mad at me, and I can't did shoot myself. Did get mad at you? A few people did. I had to explain it, but at the end of the day, I said, Niggas really got mad at you for being on that record when you saying this ain't serious. Missy, pun. Missy was mad at you? Yeah, just... You know, she got over it, but it was like, you know, it wasn't as funny because certain people's disses wasn't as, you know, some right. people's disses was bad as opposed to, you know, Stevie J wasn't, he thought it was funny, but initially he was like, yo, is that your artist die? Like, are you yeah, going to run around, so you're going to do this, right, yeah, yeah, you know? And I was like, nah, it's just a record. Those, huh? I was like, nigga, we in the record business. Do you like the record? Is it hot? It's hot. That's all I needed to hear. Right. That's it, yeah. That's crazy. Punk yeah. was mad? Yeah, Punk was a little mad, too. That's the, the line, you, yeah, you know, the line. But my nigga, you saying this ain't serious. I know, I know. <laughs> like, I don't, that's the part I don't understand. Yeah, when I yeah. heard it, I was like, D-Dot is clearly saying, this, 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 ain't this, this isn't even not D-Dot, this is the mad rapper right, right, right. saying this ain't, ain't serious. serious. When the fuck did we ever take the mad rapper seriously? <laughs> right, right, you can't, please. It's you comedy. Can, it's comedy, like, it's comedy. I think it was the funniest shit ever. <laughs> but I was like, okay, if niggas gonna be mad, they're gonna be mad at Fifth. Right. But that was Fifth's way of kicking in the door to let everybody know where he was at and who he was. So be mad at him. I can't believe people are actually upset with you. But for, also... The creativeness because it came off of dreams of fucking an R&B exactly. bitch. Exactly. It was a branch off that tree. Right. So it was creative and it was years later. Way years later. Years later. So yeah. it was like perfect timing. So I don't think people recognize his creative genius in the fact that he took something and put a little flip on it and turned it into something Do else. You, when you listen to dreams now, do you go, wow, if this was now... This He'd be record, in jail. He'd be in jail. He would got fucked up. Big would have been in the Me Too movement like a motherfucker. <laughs> For real. Didn't did, did nigga say I make Raven Simone cry date rape? I think that's what he yeah, said. He yeah, he said that yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said that shit. <laughs> and Escape was forever upset about oh, that. Oh, yeah, they was forever upset. Yeah, they were, yeah. but that was kind of like, geez. No, he said, I put Shantae more pussy in stitches. Right. I fucked RuPaul before I fucked him up. Oh, yeah, Escape bitches. bitches. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, he said that shit. Yeah, he, he went... But, <laughs> you, no, come on. No filter. Nah, that's a big diss. You yeah, said I fuck RuPaul? <laughs> <laughs> I fuck the ugly ass escape bitches. Right. Those, yo, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, big was... Big, the only one that really got that shit right there was Mary. Oh, yeah, he wasn't gonna diss no, Mary. He loved Mary. No, he loved Mary. Was, he loved Mary. What about Mary? Yeah. I was like, yeah. No, he said, no, Mary, he loved Sade. Sade, ooh, I know that the pussy tie. Slap to the turn and give a flashback to Ike. This woman was abused you know for fucking 20 years. And this nigga said, I'm slap to the turn and give a flashback of Ike. I said, yo, this nigga big. Is, this is the most disrespectful record I ever heard in my life. And you could not. Stop listening to it. No, you couldn't get over that record right. right. You couldn't play that record right now. Mm -mm. Like another record I love, Punks Jump Up to Get Beat Down. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. No way. No way. No way you can play that record right now. They got to take that shit out. The gay references got yeah. to be exact. <laughs> I can flip, fly, flow, fuck up. 
Yeah. Yeah. He was like, I don't understand. I ain't down with it. And I don't understand their ways. Like, right. you can't. <laughs> the kind of shit that creative music that was made then, you could not absolutely get over with none of that shit now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a whole different time. Are there any songs out there? I'm going to give me three that you ever heard and say, God damn, I'm mad I didn't produce that shit. Down, 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 down. Down, down, down. Shook. Shook ones, part two. Ooh. When me and Mary heard that shit on the road, I was on the road when I heard that song at a radio station where she was doing it, and I heard something in the back, and I was like, damn, that shit sound crazy. What is that? So I walked in the DJ. He had just got it, and he was playing that shit, and I made him make me and Mary a cassette of that shit. So yeah, Shook ones, part two. To all the killers and the hundred dollar yeah, billers, the real niggas who ain't got no film. Shout out to Havoc. One rest of, in peace from Prodigy. Rest in peace, oh, Prodigy. Man, Shout Pete, Havoc, rest in peace, bro. Um, yes. Uh, so many, yo. There's so many. Um, EPMD uh, uh, with the LL Cool J. Bam, 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 bam. Rampage. Um, yeah, yeah. Go slow down, yeah, baby. Yeah, slow down, mm-hmm. baby. That was do, do, for yeah, me. That, that, that was yeah, man. stupid. And then pretty much anything tried, but I loved, I was so in love with hot sex on the platter. Dump, 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 that shit. Where just, you at? Yeah, I loved that. Yeah, so man. Many, I can name so many, fam. That, in your opinion, yeah. was that the most creative time in hip hop? Uh, Say 90 to, to 2000. The most creative? Uh, I think, I think, the, yeah. And the reason I say that is because the characters that came out of those things that are long lasting, the way the Missies presented themselves, the Busters, the right. CeeLo's, the Andre 3000s, the yeah. Outcasts, you know, the Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg probably got to be one of the most iconic figures in fuck hip hop in the world. In the world. In the world. So The way he's been able to reinvent himself. Now this and, motherfucker and, got and a monetize, prime movie coming and out and called and, The Underdogs. Yeah. Big up to Snoop for that. Big up to Snoop. And for a motherfucker that when I met him, at Dre's house when when under when they had deep cover out. Mm. And I'm interviewing him and he would not look in the camera, dude. Even when he was, he was doing his he drop, was shy, he, was he was shy as he was a shy, motherfucker, he was man. Yeah, he was shy. And to see this dude develop into what he was. And Snoop stayed out of the East Coast, West Coast shit. But it was, let's let's be honest, it was bad boy death row. I, I I tell you a story about Snoop. Okay. We was filming I'm going down um, for Mary J. Blige in LA. And Puff rented these Porsches, and we zooming up and down the, the, the airplane strip. They had to come and tell us to stop. We mm, we <laughs> up to 180. We racing each other while Mary's filming. And Snoop sent Corrupt to come pick us up. This is during the crazy time. And me, Puff, and Uncle Paulie go to Snoop's crib. First time I'm meeting Snoop. Mansion. He got dog paws on his floor. His dog, <laughs> dog paw rug. Right. It's the first time I seen a jukebox that played CDs. And he got ready to die in there. He got mob deep in there. Snoop is hip hop. Right. And he sits us down and says, I just want to let y'all know, I ain't got nothing to do with this shit. Wow. I love, I wish it wasn't like this, but I, my allegiance is here, it has to be. Right. But I, I love y'all, and I know y'all love us. That was the realest shit I heard. Right. And I love Corrupt, and Corrupt was there. So, um, and I think that's probably what the story you told about is because they came in peace, man. Yeah, they niggas, did. Them niggas didn't want no problem. Yeah, they didn't like, want that. That was all shit. I don't, I don't know who it was, but it was, I, it was certain niggas nigga that didn't want. The battery and pops they didn't want. That, they didn't want none of that shit. It was such a shame too, because yeah. them two dudes are friends, man. Yeah. They were really good friends, man. We used to, this thing used to call Stretch when he got off the plane. We'd jump in the MPV, go pick Pac up from the airport, go see Big. And I'll be the first, and I'll be the first one to say, Big definitely learned from Pac. Yeah. Pac was the seasoned one. Yes. So he'd be a fool not to learn from That's Pac. That's right. So if anybody says Big, yeah, Pac, of course he did. Of course he learned from Pac. Of course he did. But don't think Pac... Didn't ear hustle some things that was happening Absolutely. here, as style wise, flow wise, musical, sonically, that he took back to his side of town too. Yeah, it was yeah. an even exchange. Right now, have you talked to Puff? I spoke to Puff literally about five weeks ago. How's he doing? Um, 
But I talked to him prior to all this yeah. stuff. So he was doing fine prior to all that shit that hit the fan. So right. I spoke to him before the other stuff. So you haven't talked to him since all this shit Not hit? Not at all, no. So all this shit hit the fan? Not at all. Wow, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and it's, it's a lot of things that are going on right now. And there's, he's not the only one. There's a lot of other people, and it just seems like, you know, the spotlight is on Puff for some odd reason. All right, All right cool. more with D Dot, what he's doing right now, coming up on Come On, Son, Come the on, Podcast. Son. Come on, son, 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 son. We are back. Come on, son. Derek D Dot Angeletti is my guest today. One of my homies for a long, long time. I think more than 30 years we've known each other. Absolutely, more than 30 years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lives parallel. We've been in a lot of the same places <laughs> at the same time. Word up. My man is just so amazing Thank at you, everything man. that you do, bro. Thank that, you, man. That I appreciate that. You should, be, you should be celebrated, man, because it's cats like you that gave a lot of people a soundtrack to their lives, man. Mm. Like, you don't even understand the impact of some of the stuff that you produced or was part of that gave people a soundtrack to their lives. Like, it's very important. Music is so important to people that sometimes we fail to realize how music makes us feel, but you were there for a lot of great fucking records, and you just did a new Black Rob album. Tell me I how did. that came around, because you did executive produce his first album? Absolutely, yes, Okay. Sir. So you just said something key. The name of my book and my, my experience is called I Was There. Okay. So that you hit on that, yes. Currently, November 3rd, I dropped the Black Rob Life Story 2 album. It's a double album. And I did it because my guy didn't get all the fanfare, you know, in his passing that a lot of other people got. And he, to me, was a monster. Yeah. He was, the, you know, the second, to me, the second best storyteller at Bad Boy. Um, he was my sixth man when Big was alive. Okay. So if I'm Dean Smith, he's my sixth man. Big passes, he gets on the starting five with the locks and Right, mace. Black Rob joined the mob. There ain't no replacing him. That's it, right? That's right. No replacing him. So <clears throat> I decided that my man needed to get his, his props. So me and my boy Riz Deluxe and his manager Jamal, about 20, 20 maybe, 21, after he died, he died in 2021. So right after that, I just said, I was going to do something with him, but he was sick. So I said, I'm going to get busy. And from then on, I started working. And we got love. Faith showed up for me. Kid Capri, Smoke Dizza, Cali Ranks, Puffy, G Depp. They all showed up. The Hitmen showed up. Mm. Nasheen Myrick, Ron Lawrence, Buck Wow, because he was on the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, I said Stevie J showed up on the hook. And, you know, new people, Sean C and LV, Smoke Dizza came through for me. Um, so it was just a labor of love, man. It was a labor of love. So I'm working on that. I'm working on that. And we was, we've been working on this Hitmen documentary, but. It's been receiving a lot of resistance. And, and, and I, would, I would say the same thing. So, and I spoke about this when I was on uh, The Breakfast Club uh -huh. years ago, that we still haven't secured a deal for that thing. And I think the Hitman story really needs to be told um, because of that era. Um, so that's what I was working on for years. So I put that on pause for a little while to finish Black Rock. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I needed to get that out. So that took me about a year, year and a half to really finish Black Rob where I wanted to. So it's out now. Life Story 2, double album, Black Rob, executive produced by myself. So go get that for me, support. And, you know, shout out to, and peace and RIP, RIP to, to BR. Bacardi Rob, baby. <laughs> Bacardi Absolutely, Rob. Bacardi, Bacardi Rob. Rob. Me and Rob did it. Couple of things together. Right? <laughs> For real, we had, the, we had the reality show together for yeah, a, little, yeah. a little quick minute. Yeah, yeah the Comeback Kings. The Comeback Kings. Come yeah, yeah, we was yeah, on Channel King. 11 in New York yeah, late yeah, at night. Come back we had a good time. I, one yeah. time I was directing. Them niggas almost drove me crazy. <laughs> the him and Trash and, and, and my man, little uh, Jamal, and all of these niggas yeah, did. Yeah, you know, yeah. I got Nate Sean who's a real actor, okay. and I got talent, who's a comedian, and, and we don't really smoke like that. Oh, okay. Nigga, every five minutes, I had to call me, yo, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 smoke breaks. Him and Mr. Cheeks together? Yeah, smoke, oh. breaks, smoke breaks, smoke breaks. Smoke breaks was, <laughs> smoke breaks was hours, two hours, like, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Now nah, y'all fucking it up because the production is rolling. We still got to spend this money and y'all yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah, I got to try yeah. to wrangle y'all niggas. Oh, hey, oh, hey. Yeah. June Balloon is there. He ain't June fucking Balloon, yeah. <laughs> He's smoking too. He's smoking too, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> so we had, we had a really good time, man. What yeah. do you see? I know you said you got a book coming out called I Was There. 
When is that book going to drop? Who knows? My wife is an author. My, well, we own um, Writer Girl Media. My wife, okay. is a, my wife is a romance fiction author. She's pretty big. She had two number one books overseas. She's a USA Today top seller here in the States. So I've been, that's been part of my shtick for the last few years. I'm actually a book publisher, independent. Um, and my wife's name is Lisa Lane Blakeney. She writes under that. Um, so my book is going to come under that brand, but I, I have to find the writer. She is going to start it, mm -hmm. but I want to find the hip hop writer that's going to be able to put my life in the perspective that I need it to be because it's not always me necessarily doing something. It's me happening to be on a scene that I can visually tell you that this really happened and the end result was this because I actually was there to see it. You know what I'm saying? So like I can tell people for sure that uh, who shot you was recorded before the beef. Right. Now how it was used during the beef, I had nothing to do with it if people think it was about Pac. But I can literally show evidence. He did. Who? Park did. Of course did. Of course he, he did. He did. But my point is, these are things that have actual facts attached to right. it. Right. That it was recorded. That I was there. Right. LL was there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So these are people that could speak on it. So that's what my story is about. Living actual proof of things that can be documented and seen by other people as well. It can be verified. And yes whatever it's called, stamped. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. What, a, what a fucking life, bro. And yeah. hey, tell everybody about your daughter. Talk about Autumn, bro. Okay, Autumn, wow. <laughs> I this have, is crazy, I, yeah, I, have, I have four beautiful daughters, but my daughter Autumn, who's in my, uh, following in my footsteps in the entertainment world, she decided she wanted to do uh, the theater. So she's a singer and a performer, but her chops were directing, so she entered this thing called The Roundabout, and the roundabout has all these children, children, these kids and, and, and adults that want to be in Broadway. And out of thousands and thousands of kids, they picked her for her work to become an assistant director on and off Broadway to be under the tutelage of major directors. One of them is which is the guy who did the, um, the play uh, about the Spanish people and, and um, all the Spanish Oh, uh, uh, the, uh, not uh, West Side Story. No, um, the other joint. About hip hop. About, about yeah, hip -hop. yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, talking yeah, about? So, so and she, it's, it's, it's a few he, of them. Did, yeah, it's a few I know of them. So she's about. working under their tutelage. Um, and right now she's working on a play called Jonah. Um, and she's the assistant director. So I'm very proud of her. I'm very proud of all my children. Obviously, right. yes. But that's what she's doing in the space that I'm so in. So God gave you four girls, huh? God gave me four. Oh, girls. you was in them streets. <laughs> out, bro. I got four girls. Yeah, so I, got, I, know. You, yeah. I got one boy and four yeah, girls. I have no boys. God give it back to you. <laughs> what you was doing? <laughs> slingshot. Yeah, you're a slingshot. That's why you got you got four motherfucking Niggas girls. Man. Slingshot. You are. You are, my brother. You are a huge part of history. Thank you, man. You are a catalyst of a huge part of history. You're a spoke in this wheel of hip hop that if you weren't there, the wheel wouldn't be what the wheel is. Wow. You, it, you, re it really is, man. Thank it you, really man. is. And, you know, a lot of times people, they do a lot of shit. You know, they just did the Grammy 50 joint. Um, hip hop. Mm -hmm. Where was the graph writers, the DJs, and the break dancers? If they wasn't there, it wasn't hip hop. Right. Right? But... What you've done for this music and this culture, we can never say thank you to you enough. Thank you. So I don't give you your flowers, man, because you that dude. You always have been that dude. And you've always been the most humble motherfucker in the world. To my detriment sometimes. My <laughs> D-Dot in the building. This yes. is, come on, son. The podcast, you. man. Y'all keep going first. Everything will fall into place. I'll talk at you, with you, to you, and about your ass next week. Come on, son. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Let's go. Hell oh, yeah, son. Grab the yams on the track. Come on, son. Come on, son.